Hey guys, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. And before we get started today, I mentioned this at the end of the last video, um, but I do want to start some merch and I wanted to get your guys' suggestions. I'm not sure if everyone watched the end of the video last time, so I wanted to say it in the beginning of this video. So if you have any suggestions or ideas, um, I'm going to come up with some ideas on my own too. And if you guys want to email me, maybe some images or sketches of what you might like. And then I thought we could take like a poll on one of those poll things on YouTube. We can put them all together and vote. And yeah, just start off with t-shirts, hoodies, maybe some hats. Um, my thought was maybe having this small picture here and then above it or below it, Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. But let me know what you guys think. Okay, so let's get into today's case. Today we are going to be talking about the disappearance of Marine First Lieutenant Matthew Kraft. And Matthew went missing on February 23rd of 2019. At, he was going to be doing a 195 mile the Sierra High Route, which he was beginning. He was set to begin his tri uh, trip at the Kearsage Pass Trail on February 23rd, and then he was going to end up around Bridgeport and Mono County around March 4th or 5th. That was the planned route. And here is a map of the Sierra High Route. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with this. It is a, a difficult route, in my opinion, and for a lot of people that report being on it. I've only done a small section of it, but it runs all the way up through various parks, Kings Canyon, Sequoia, up through Yosemite, uh, Sierra National Forest. It ends up where he was gonna end up, up near Bridgeport. And unfortunately, this was the year of 2019, and it was still winter, and this was a record snow year. I mean, they had, I'm gonna have a little graph here that shows the, snow amounts but this year they just had um, and i was actually there hiking the pacific crest trail this year that year and the snow was i mean they were skiing in mammoth lakes up through august the snow was just incredible i mean it was so deep and then you know the snow melt started late so it was really rough conditions i mean the river crossings up through places like in the sierra like yosemite and king's uh, sequoia i mean they were so high even through July. It was very tough in a lot of areas. But it's important to note that Matthew had graduated from some of the Marine Corps' most rigorous training, including the Infantry Officer Course and the Winter Mountain Leaders Course. So he had gone through a lot of rugged wilderness survival. And according to his friends and family, he was just, they called him an animal. I mean, he could just get through anything. And going into this 195 mile trek, he was very well prepared. Unfortunately, due to the weather and the elements that year that probably played a role in what happened but it's hard to say we don't really know what happened matthew did receive the proper approval from the marine corps before setting off on his trek Tra he, typical leave plans usually include locations of where the marine intends to stay while away from the base and information on how the marine might be reached if needed so he did leave all that information and people knew his route matthew who was only 24 years old at the time has been declared dead by the Marine Corps or what they say in the reports um, they say that most likely he he died due to the weather and elements however for the family they have been on record saying and I totally understand this they cannot get full closure until they have him back they kind of they, there are no answers learn what happened at least have their his body so they can give him a proper burial so that's why I wanted to do this case because we need to bring Matthew home after Matthew had failed to contact anybody his father called the Mono County Sheriff's Department and deputies checked the various trailheads and they traced Kraft's last cell phone activity, which was only in the Independence area, which is in Inyo County. I'll put a map up right here. The Inyo County Sheriff's Office search and rescue began their official search on March 5th. The evening of March 8th, Matthew's gray two-door 2016 Jeep Wrangler was found in the lower Gray's Meadow parking ground, which is right above Independence. Unfortunately, this really didn't add any more clues because it matched up with where he was supposed to start. And at this point, the search was aided by various rescue teams from the Marine Corps, Air National Guard, and other county and state federal agencies. This is a picture of Matthew when he was doing some of his more intense training. And eventually the search had to bring in these special cat units. These were literally used to rope tow search and rescue me members up on skis to the Onion Valley, Valley parking lot above Independence. And this was just because the snow was so crazy. As you can see, 
that in the right to the right there, that's one of the snow cats. And you can see how small it looks in comparison to some of these mountains. A lot of times you can't tell in the pictures. They also deployed various aerial, aerial searches while they could, but again, the weather really did damper a lot of these search efforts. According to the Inyo County authorities at the time, they said that avalanche conditions, various snow bridges, high winds, and just the crazy amount of snow was basically hindering the search area, which was basically the size of Rhode Island. <laughs> I mean, which is really crazy if you think about it. At this point in the search, only a few days in, both the aerial and ground search operations were still being utilized. However, when the weather conditions in the Sierra became even worse, and that was due to a series of winter storms that had dumped record amounts of snow in and around that whole area. So at this point, a lot of the ground and aerial searches had to be stopped for a point, and they were just using the cats, which you can see another picture of one of them right here. And they were able to airlift two Inyo County search and rescue avalanche experts to the crest of Kearsarge Pass so that they could begin to clear the route on the east side and access assess the avalanche risk for future search operations. On the Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park side of the crest, work continued to follow up on possible points of interest and look for any clues. But again, with the amount of snow that had fallen in the area, I mean, it's, it's hard to find things, especially because the snow was all so fresh. Here's a, a big map of the search grid area and various points that they focused on. There was a lot of interest on the public's part to try and help with the search at the time. However, because of the crazy hazardous conditions, the Sequoia and Kings Canyon incident commander at the time, his name is David Fox, he recommended, he advised the public not to help and they closed off any uh, you know, volunteers that weren't already involved in SAR, which again, that didn't help because you know when you have extra people, obviously there's a better chance of finding things. That said, I completely understand why they made that decision. I mean, these were some of the worst conditions that that area had seen in years and SAR guys were in danger themselves and they reported almost losing several of their own. So that was a very smart decision on the part of the authorities. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna ask or make these comments about why do people go out on these solo hikes and why would they put themselves in this situation? And yes, the Sierra High Route is a very tough route when there's not, you know, three or four feet of snow on it. So yes, it is a very challenging route, but there's also a lot of rewards that come with it. I mean, if you see in these pictures, it's just breathtaking, it's beautiful. And then a lot of people just like being out in the wilderness and surrounded by the mountains. And in Matthew's case, he had probably some of the best training that's available to a human being. And he was very experienced. And just because someone is experienced, because I know I get these comments all the time, it doesn't mean that you know bad things can't happen to them. Sometimes it has nothing to do with their experience level, it's weather natural elements, you know, things that you're, are out of your control, and especially up on these steep mountains, you know, one slip and you're, you can be sliding down a mountain. So yes, I mean, me personally, if I was going to attempt the Sierra High Route, especially in winter, I'd want to go with a group of people. But, you know, there's been tons of people that have successfully gone through the Sierra High Route in all times of seasons. We just don't know what happened to Matthew's case. Unfortunately, due to the incredibly high snow year and avalanche threats and high winds and then all these snowstorms that just kept pounding the area, there was just so many things working against this search. But, I mean, the SAR teams did an amazing job with what they were up against and they brought in all those cats and special equipment and experts and unfortunately through all that they, they found nothing. Crews from local, state, and federal agencies were all searching a 400 square mile eight radius from Yosemite down to Sierra and Inyo National Forest, Kings Canyon National Park. The 195 mile route has elevations ranging from 9,000 feet to 12,000 feet and it was covered with anywhere from four to eight feet of snow during that time. Unfortunately, all the searches were eventually called off and they're still looking for him today. And if anyone has any information or finds anything when they're out hiking, please contact the Inyo County Sheriff's Office at 760-878-0383, option four, or the Mono County Sheriff's Office at 760-932-7549, option seven. And of course, I'm gonna have all this information in the description. 
And if you're in the Fresno area, you can contact the Fresno County Sheriff's Office at 559-600-8400. I'd like to dedicate this video to First Lieutenant Matthew Kraft, and my thoughts and prayers go out to him, his family, and all those that knew him. Hopefully one day soon, Matthew will be able to be brought home one way or another, and his family can get the closure that they need and deserve. Thank you everybody for watching, as always. Please keep the comments respectful, and special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music. And yes, please let me know if you guys have any ideas for the merch. Like I said, this picture here you see on the left with the man walking towards the light. I'm going to have a few designs with something similar to that, and then my name underneath it, like, you know, the name of the channel. And, you know, just something simple that has like a little graphic. But if you guys have any ideas, let me know too. I'd love to hear from you and we can, you know, take a vote on it. I want you guys to be happy with what we decide on. So just send me an email and we'll get the, the merch going. And if any of you guys know a good place to get them from, please let me know too.